Hey everybody and welcome to Let's Look at Video Ball. This is a new sports game and I hesitated only briefly to call it a sports game because, it, well, you know, most sports games you go Madden, it's based on football, you know, American football. FIFA, it's based on European football or association football, whatever you would like to call it. NHL, it's based on uh, basketball, of course. Um, but this is a... Uh, a new sport, if you will, that is mapped in the digital environment, but it has the tropes of sports games, teams, goals, points, detailed stats, etc, etc. Um, it's developed by Action Button Entertainment LLC and published by Iron Galaxy, who you may know also as the developer and publisher of Dive Kick, the uh, minimalistic fighting game that came out, I guess that's like three years and a bit ago at this point. Uh, I played an hour of this on the show, online multiplayer, it has local multiplayer as well, but it does have online multiplayer, worked fine on the show, played about an hour and a half, maybe, eh, probably an hour and a half is a fair estimate of uh, single player stuff and also uh, with Sin Victa as well, just kind of 1v1ing here, and I'm going to explain what's going on, uh, just, we'll get started with like a local game of one on one. Just so that I can have a little bit of a window to explain what the heck is going on here. One thing you'll note, is, like, the menus, UI, music, fantastically done. Like, a lot of attention to detail. It's really got that feel of, like, a... I, I want to say, like, an N64-era sports game. I don't know why something in my brain is saying Sega Genesis. Man, I was, when I was broke, man, I couldn't picture this. Um, we're just gonna take, uh, the, uh, left side here. We'll play on the orange team. You, you save your initials. And uh, it, it keeps track of your stats, at least for single-player stuff. I'm not sure if it actually tracks your stats for uh, multiplayer stuff. And then we'll just put uh, the AI on here. And I don't think it matters, really, whether we've got Striker or blah, blah. They might have different personalities, but I'm not totally sure. There is an announcer, by the way. Um, and let's just play on the, the most basic of all maps here. So I'm going to do my best, at least in the first game here. Games tend to be maybe, um, I don't know, at, at longest under 10 minutes. Usually 5, sometimes under 5. Um, I mean, we did 13 games, I think, in the course of the, uh, the one hour that we played it on stream. So, the goal, at least by default settings, is to, uh, be the first player to score, or the first team to score 10 goals. You score a goal by getting the ball in the opponent's, uh, goal section. The way that you do so is by hitting it. It's not like Rocket League in the sense that you, like, bump into, uh the ball in order to knock it in. I know every single review is gonna be like Rocket League, is this, it's Rocket League, this summer's Rocket League. It is Rocket League in many ways, it's an accessible uh, sports game that you don't necessarily need to be, you know, a diehard fan of any particular sport to appreciate. Um, and it, and it has a little bit more nuance, it's, it's really got that easy to learn, hard to master thing that, that people really liked about Rocket League as well, but uh, what's kind of unique about this as well, you're, you're probably, seeing, probably noticing now is uh, it has this multi-ball kind of functionality that comes in that keeps things zany. And it might seem like a gimmick, but it actually works really well. Because especially when you've got like two-on-two, two, I haven't played three-on-three three yet, but especially when you've got two-on-two, two, there's a lot more things to keep track of. And I think that helps keep it dynamic and sort of frenetic as well. But there's a lot more nuance than it might originally appear as I am smoking the Christ out of the computer right here. Basically, there's four different ways that you can interact with the ball. I mean, if there's five because you can actually bump into it yourself. Um, but these are all accomplished, I'm using controller here, just by holding the A button for different lengths of time. So, if you watch me, we'll let the AI session on us for a bit. We can spam out these, like, little tiny triangles. What these basically do, you know, if they touch the enemy, which we just saw right there, it will, um, knock them around for a bit, you know, Mario Kart style, they'll basically spin out. Then you have the one that I just fired right there, and I'll do it again right here. If you charge your, uh, weapon for a little longer, uh, it creates a triangle that's more persistent. It'll travel until it hits a wall or until it hits an enemy, so we can hit, uh, one ball multiple times, as you're seeing right there. Then, if you hold it down a little bit longer, this is gonna win the game. Oh, okay, well, as you can see, if you touch a ball, you lose your own charge. If you hold down a little bit longer, you get level three. Level three is a big, uh, smash, but as you can see, the enemy can really, uh, return it quite quickly as well, so that momentum works against you as well as in your favor. If you've got, like, open daylight, it's really easy to sneak this one in because it's fast, but if you don't have open daylight, um, you could pretty much be setting your enemy up to destroy you. And then the final one, which we are going to be able to fit in here, is if you go just a little bit longer than the smash, in fact, I think most of the time, uh, the smash is going to accidentally turn into the, the square, but that is a blocker that takes two hits or one hit from a smash level. Um, ball, which will uh, basically serve as a barrier. So you can put those on, like, just behind a ball if you want to make sure that at least you buy yourself some time to deal with the other situation before you have to come back to that. Let's just shuffle uh, everything up here and we'll do a rematch here. So the real nuance of the game is that 
You know, in, we're gonna be on the right side here, by the way. Um, I don't know why my stats have reset. Maybe they're reset every single time uh, you like close the game and reopen it. That would that would be in keeping with you know the arcade style of the game, I suppose. Um, the real nuance of the game is not like, hey, hit the ball into the enemy goal better than the enemy hits it into yours. The real nuance is is knowing you know when to use what type of shot because like I, I've seen it having played with a, a few players who are new like having been new myself but also having like watched Sinvicta go through this process and then Cobalt and Nick simultaneously on the show. At first you start and you're spamming out you know little baby triangles and you're wondering why you're getting your butt kicked. Then you go okay why would I ever do anything but smash stupid game designer. There's no reason for there to be anything but smash in this game. It goes the fastest, so it's gonna be the best, you know? But then you realize that it can be returned uh, really easily and, and oftentimes causes more problems for you. Like, it's a really high-risk, medium reward? I don't know. I, I, I don't have enough data to back that up. Um, and then you go and you're in the phase that I'm in right now, which is why would I use anything but the level 2, because it's so strong, it can hit the ball and then hit the enemy trying to defend the ball. Uh, but th there's nuance there as well. I'm in the, still in the square-hating uh, phase of my life. So it really does, this is such a cliche when it comes to games, almost as much of a cliche as like it's the, you know, Dark Souls of Blank, but it really is easy to learn, uh, hard to master. I'm not gonna say, you know, impossible to master, difficult to master. Um, but keep in mind the meta changes, you know, as you have more people playing, uh, not the meta, I guess, but the, your meta changes as you have more people playing the game, you know, as you go from 1v1 to 2v2, you gotta focus on multiple different things. You can also change, uh, settings like the number of balls that you've got going on. This is gonna be a dangerous one, I'll just block that off. Um, one thing that I think the game does pretty well is actually, graphically, oftentimes you just talk about, um, ooh, I'm an asshole, that was a cheap trick there. Um, oftentimes you just talk about, like, how good a game looks, and I really think that Video Ball, um, from an art design standpoint, looks nice. And I think that's, you know, one of those things where it's not just based on, like, texture quality, so your mileage may vary. Um, but I think it's got a nice style to it, but the style is also very much in keeping, um, in, with benefiting the game, because really there's not a lot on the screen, it's pretty minimalistic, and I will admit that, you know, of all the things you see on the screen, the trail of where you just were maybe is not necessarily the most important thing visually, but everything else, it existing on the screen has a visual purpose, and I think the game does a pretty good job of uh, ca communicating itself well while you're actually playing it in vivo, if that makes sense, you know, in the environment. I don't know why I explained that, it makes it sound a little even more pretentious than it originally was. Um, but at first, I'll admit, when I started playing, I was like, well, I'll show you the stat screen here, and you can peruse this while we talk about um, what I was going to talk about. Again, the interface is really, really slickly done here. Um, there, there was clearly, like, a, a keen eye paid to that. But when I first started playing, I was, like, a little disappointed. I was like, ah, oh, it's a little busy. I don't like that you are basically playing, like, billiards with the ball or marbles. I wish that it was more like Rocket League, where you just had, like, a boost. You slammed into it when it got it done. But I've really come to appreciate the kind of uh, minutia of the game and the flow in uh, in Video Ball of like, okay, I see my opponent is charging up a shot because the, his triangle is getting larger as he's charging it here. I'm gonna come in and uh, shoot him, knock him off the ball, and then take a little bit of that time to make uh, like a level two shot myself. Uh, and I think that the way that that works is really cool. Uh, let's go back to the title screen here. This is 10 bucks, by the way. I, I, this is with a review copy that I got for myself Video as well ball. in the interest of full disclosure. Um, so, in terms of single player, there is, uh, an, the, the local is basically just like play against the AI, it's like a quick match, essentially. The arcade, I haven't played very much, I've only, I've only done the first or second level. Oh no, I've done the first four. Okay, sure. <laughs> um, basically this is, uh, asymmetrical, so instead of it being 2v2, it's challenges that you go through, almost the same way you would in a fighting game or something like that. And by surmounting these challenges, you, um, get further and further into the arcade mode. Um, I, I think another strength of the game, and you're, and you're witnessing it here, is that it, it really does a lot with its color palettes as well, and I, I normally, like, if you go back to, you know, watching me talk about, you know, Rocket League, or even to Dota, or something like that, something that has never bothered me in, in games where the fundamentals are really good and really pure is, um, like, number of maps. I really feel like as long as the game is solid, even if you've only got one map, oh, that was not a great own goal there. Um, my, my defense has always been, like, you know, like, Basketball has one map. Nobody ever goes and watches an NBA game and they go, you know, I, I wish this was on a different basketball court. I know there's different arenas, but you know what I mean. I, I wish it was on the one where, you know, it was made out of ice or something like that. Or, you know, the one where the goals were on the ceiling instead of being just a, 10 feet up in the air. But, by the way, notice the AI is being pretty nice to me, I think, because it's a relatively early challenge. But I'm assuming that that'll get, you know, 
harder and harder as the game goes on. Um, I guess, I think they have behavior, like, they'll only, um, do something. They'll only, you know, be aggressive if you're past a certain stretch of the, you know, court with the ball. Um, but Video Ball actually does have a really nice assortment of maps, and, and we've seen some of them here, but, um... There are, uh, there are more, and I'll, I'll, maybe after this one I'll take a look at it. Honestly, the arcade mode doesn't really interest me, but your mileage may vary with that. Um, I'm more of the kind of person who, you know, I will play against the AI, that doesn't bother me. 1v1 I find a little boring at this point, like the AI. I'm not sure if there's different levels of it, but I, I'm regularly trouncing the AI, not to flatter myself for beating, you know, something that's probably designed to be beaten. But, um... Even even here, 1v2. Mind you, it's not really a pure 1v2, considering they'll only attack me if I'm close to them. But, um... The, the real crux of this game, and the, the real, like, should I buy this, I think, uh, which is, is essentially the purpose of this video, is to answer that question. Um, the real, you know, should I buy this answer is completely dependent on whether or not you have friends that you want to play it with. Maybe you're one of those people who's a weirdo like me, and... Like, playing this game against the AI for 10 hours is something that, you know, crosses your mind is something that might actually be a little bit interesting to do. Um, but definitely it's multiplayer focused. The online, so far, I've encountered a little latency, but on the NLSS we were playing with four people, and it worked out totally fine. And I, I, when I say totally fine, I mean, like, if there was any, you know, latency, and I mean, obviously from a network perspective there's, there's latency, but, um, if there's any, uh, like, lag, it was not noticeable. Last night when I was playing with Sinvicta, once or twice it sort of, you know, got a little spotty, but for the most part it seems like the netcode is handled fine. That could just as easily be explained as my connection. Um, the thing that, that is kind of worth noting is that, you know, as with any indie game that's multiplayer focused, community size is going to be an issue. It seems like the game, I, I peeped in on Steam uh, Spy, which is not 100%, uh, uh, 100%, what, what's the word I'm looking for? Correct? When it comes to 100% accurate, that's that's the word, that, that five cent word, accurate. Um, it's not 100% accurate when it comes to, uh, you know, real-time updates of community and numbers. It seemed like there were like a thousand, just over a thousand owners of the game. It's not enough to really have a robust online community right now. So if you're looking for like quick matches, I did manage to get into one. Um, and it only took like 20 or 30 seconds to go for it, but we're gonna do that in a live environment and test it and see if we can find anybody as well during, you know, what I assume are at least peak hours PST, uh, around like 9 p.m. here. Um, but, uh, definitely is the kind of thing where if you want to make sure you're getting your money's worth, have friends that you can play with as well. And with friends, it was really fun. I, I was like... Mild thumbs up on the game when I was playing it through solo. I was like, I'm a sucker for the pseudo sports stuff, but maybe it's just me. Maybe I, when I play it with other people, they're not going to see the magic, but everybody actually had a really fun time with it. And I think it really shines like that. It's like Rocket League, you know, it's got the mechanics that, that make it work as a standalone, but it also works really well um, as a multiplayer game. Oh, I, I hit the B button, but the B button was selected in this situation because there's a, some Japanese influence, perhaps. Um, Okay, so ignore these guys momentarily. We're gonna quit game, go back to main menu here, and we'll try to do online stuff. Um, I, I, before we do that, let's go to local, and uh, I'll show you 2v2. I haven't played 3-on-3 three three yet. It seems a little busy, but we'll, we'll see uh, what happens here. I'm not actually gonna do a match yet, because hopefully we'll just be able to do a match uh, online. That would be awesome to show off, you know, the netcode in a live environment, and the, you know... The fact that it actually works and I'm not just blowing smoke up your ass, or maybe when it worked before, it was a total accident, and now it... It barely works, but I have no reason to necessarily believe that. So here's, I just want to show you like a variety of the different maps here. Uh, online, from what I've seen so far, you pretty much just get, uh... You just get this one, Pro, and this one, Basic. Um, and I think that's to, you know, maybe not overwhelm you with some of the super weird ones, like Twister, for example. Um, but it looks like there are like ten maps here. One, oh, that's, that's Basic Big, sorry. So there's variants on every single one of the big ones as well, so, oh, wait, and some of them are super as well? I can't follow this. Advantage East, Advantage West, okay. Um, as you can see, I'm not gonna go through the labor of actually counting them here. Let's say 26 maps. It may not actually be correct. That's never stopped me before. No, 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 don't stop, I... I wanna go back to the main menu. Go back. You're supposed to hit start and then hit title. Or just actually go left on the main menu and go to back. Um, or go down on the main menu and go to back. Alright, let's check online here. And, you know, you and I will see... It. <laughs> Excuse me. You and I will see at the same time if this works. Basically, it, it adheres to the one-button aesthetic all the way. 
Um, so, one thing that I'm a little confused about is I'm not totally sure what the difference between solo mode and team mode are. Um, as you can see, you know, team mode has ranked exhibition, blah blah. Um, solo mode has ranked exhibition private. I guess I'm assuming that team is when you have a pre-made team. It's not like you want to play teams with three other randoms. You want to go in there with your friend and then match against other teams. Okay, disregard. I answered my own question. Um, let's solo mode search for uh, ranked matches right now and see if we can find any. But yeah, you know, it, it is the kind of thing where I think that if this is a bit of a broader subject, but it's not plausible for every indie game with online multiplayer to have a robust community. Um, I don't know what happened there. It's not plausible, maybe, maybe it just finished the search and got zero results or something, but it's not plausible for uh, every game with online multiplayer to have a robust community. And, you know, even big games oftentimes don't uh, manage to get that ever in their lifespan or as soon after release they lose it. Um, so this is the kind of thing where I'm like, it does have online multiplayer, but maybe don't rely on finding matches online. Instead, uh, go into it with some friends. The, the thing I would hate is if, you know, you bought the game on my recommendation, and I am recommending it. I think also, $10 is pretty cheap for a game with this level of polish, and the, the as much as I don't critique games with this kind of, like, uh, style in mind, the feature list of it being, like, a great game mechanically, um, and also online multiplayer, I'm like, that dude definitely justifies the $10 price tag, I think, here, you know, we're like five years after I started doing Let's Look At's, and, and games were coming out at, uh, you know, $10 without that kind of level of panache, shall we say. So this, it, I don't think we're finding anybody, but definitely, like, if you want to make sure that you can actually play it online, make sure you have some friends who are interested as well. Maybe you want to buy it for them. Maybe you want to buy it for them, and then later be like, hey, let's go out for lunch, you're buying. That's up to you. Um... The one I found earlier was Exhibition. And I'm, I'm not restricting any of our conditions here. I'm basically saying, find me the world's first available game. I'll wait. I want to see some good Steam names. I want them to pop up. Let's just put it this way. It's no Rocket League where when you sign on, you're like, oh, there's 75,000 players. But even Rocket League had to start somewhere. But I'm not trying to suggest this will become as big as Rocket League. It, I mean, we're gonna see, if you read video ball stuff, reviews, I think they're calling them in the industry these days. Um, I, I imagine you're gonna see a lot of comparisons to Rocket League, and it really is in terms of like that accessibility, but we've already touched upon that uh, in the video so far. It's a shame that I, I shot my wad and got a, I got a game in advance of this video, but I wanted to start the video and, and talk about the fact that I'd actually had some experience with the online, like with with matchmaking, I should say, because we played online on the analysis. Um, instead of just being like, well, I hope it works when we started here. So, you know, I, that doesn't seem to be finding anybody. I'll tell you what. Um, let us quickly try team. And if we, if we don't find team, we might not even be able to do this because we might need to invite a friend for our second slot. Yeah, we do need to invite a friend for our second slot. Anyway, okay, I'm an idiot. So, I mean, that, that's a pretty honest assessment of the uh, the online multiplayer uh, capabilities. Let's do some two-on-two -two matches to finish it off here. We'll do one or two. I really do think two-on-two -two, uh, is... I don't want... I, I can't really say this, but I want to say that it's how the game is meant to be played. Certainly, it, it felt more fun to play two-on-two -two, uh, than one-on-one. -on -one, because one-on-one, you're like, ha-ha, stupid AI. My human brain is still light years ahead. Well, let's not say light years. It's still leagues ahead of, uh, of your stupid uh, computer brain. We're number one. So we just gave them a huge advantage on this one. Oh, now we're six and one. I don't know. Maybe I was only one and zero on the blue side or something like that. That's possible. Um, but yeah, you'll, you'll, you'll see things start to get a little bit zanier here, especially as more and more uh, balls come out here. Haha, ha, yes, I understand. And again, like, I, I think there is a little bit of like a learning curve associated with it, even though I say, you know, easy to play, uh, difficult to master. I think the difficulty that, that comes with gaining a certain level of competency in the game is just being able to look at the board and understand what's going on. Because at first, even though the visual language is pretty clear, you know, there, there's a lot of stuff that can happen, especially, like, really quickly, um, if, if multiple balls are colliding with each other, you know, you throw in a shot to destroy the shot of an enemy, like I just tried to do right there and then whiffed on. Um, you know, your, your teammates play in defense and he's throwing down squares, the square gets half destroyed. You see an enemy charging up a, a huge shot and then you, you know, get a little shot ready to bounce it back at a rapid speed. Uh, I do, I'm guessing, by the way, 
Even though I said that I don't think it matters what name the enemy has. I'm guessing that that does correlate to their, their actual AI. Like, Fencer seems to be way more aggro um, at uh, actually hitting players. And Sweeper seems to be, you know, hanging out mostly around the net trying to keep the balls out of there, etc, etc. Well, I have to say that even though the enemy appears to have the advantage here in terms of map design, um, we are absolutely crushing it in terms of actual gameplay here. But yeah, I mean, this is... We'll, we'll probably do one more after this, but it, it sucks that we couldn't fit in any online, because I know that that's like a... It's meant to be a strength of the game for sure. Fencer, can you fart right off, please? Um, but I really do think that that video ball is a pretty sweet game, and I think that at, at first I'll admit to you that my perception of video ball was that it was one of those games that is like a designer's game. Like I, I've been familiar with this game for I don't know probably at least two years, and I've been watching it come up, and I've been watching footage of it, and I've been like I'm like I said I'm a sucker for sports games, in, even up to and including sports friends. You know, original sports don't bother me very much uh, at all, but I was like, I don't know, for some reason it doesn't seem like it's going to appeal to me that much. And even through like the first 20 minutes that I was playing it, I was like, maybe I was right, maybe it doesn't appeal to me that much, but it really has grabbed me um, through the multiplayer uh, with, with the friends, especially on the, on the show that we did uh, today. I think we're going to skunk the AI here. So, again, don't even consider this a mild recommendation. It's actually a pretty glowing recommendation. You know, a game that, at least in uh, Canadian dollars, you can pick up for essentially the price of, like, a, you know, foot-long combo at Subway. I think you can get a lot of good summertime fun with this uh, if, if you've got uh, one or more friends that would pick it up. Ideally four, and you could play against one another, but even one friend just so you could team up and, worst-case scenario, play 1v1. Um... I think you'll get a lot of mileage out of this. Is it for everybody? It's probably pretty clear that this is not for everybody, but um, if, if you find yourself watching this and liking what you're seeing, just keep in mind, the main caveat is don't rely on matchmaking to provide your, your teammates or your opponents for you. I'm not sure that that's realistic, and I mean, I'm, it, it's kind of like this world of games that we're in right now, right? It's like with 10 games coming out every single day and also one of them is Overwatch, it's pretty difficult for every single uh, game to have a community going at uh, at any given time. Excuse me, Fencer and Punchy? Why did we put both of the super aggro AI on the same team? But it, it's making my job easy right now. Uh, I think you will, you know, get bored with the AI. Having a dedicated person or people that you can play with is going to be a, a nice touch. In that way, it's kind of like Lethal League. And Lethal League, I think, is a fantastic game. This is almost more like Lethal League than Rocket League, if I'm being honest. Of the League games, I would say the movie tie-in to League of the Extraordinary... League of Extraordinary Gentlemen is probably the League game this least resembles. Then in the number three slot, you got League of Legends. Number two, Rocket League. Number one, Lethal League. This is to, you know, sports games what Lethal League was for fighting games. AKA a cool kind of minimalization of the formula. And I think it's really well done. And mostly I'm just killing time at this point because the AI has disappointed me with how easily I've been able to surmount them. No! Sweeper! It's up to you, man! Punchy and Fencer have got me trapped in the corner. I will say, you know, in terms of like a features you'd, I'd like to see added, some kind of season mode would be cool where you could actually like track stats across a whole season while playing against the AI. Um, you know, even though that's not the most stunning part of Rocket League, that is where I spent probably like 15 or 20 hours, embarrassingly enough. Um, but anyway, Video Ball. It's 10 bucks, relatively cheap, out on Steam, really cool aesthetic, presentation, UI, music, extremely well done. Uh, gameplay, really fun mechanically, online multiplayer, it actually works. You're gonna have to take my word out or, or watch the NLSS, but um, the one caveat is bring your own community, I think. Maybe it'll pick up traction, but as of the time of this video, you can't really rely on matchmaking to provide you with uh, with opponents. But uh, if you can get your friends to pick it up, I think you're going to have a great time. For now, thanks for watching. There will be a link in the video description below to pick up Video Ball if you are interested. Again, it's $10 American over at the link in the video description. If you enjoyed the episode, click the like button. helps out a great deal. Of course, subscribe if you want to see more in the future. For now, thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.